everyone loves roses and they're wonderful in the landscape they provide a lot of color but unfortunately we have a serious disease of roses that's spreading across Oklahoma and it's especially common in the Oklahoma City and Tulsa areas. The disease is called rose rosette disease and it is actually a viral disease of roses and it is specific to roses. Early on what you might see is that the roses when they first come out you might they might be the leaves will be smaller than normal they may be distorted or have some unusual color especially roses that are red or pink often retain a red color throughout the season without turning green like a normal leaf other than that, you may notice a shoot proliferation, something that we call a witch's broom, where a lot of shoots come out at one point, so you have this bunchy broom-like symptom on the plants. On certain types of roses, you may see excessive thorn production. Often the, root, the thorns are sort of pliable and soft, and over time they'll become really uh, hard and the roses will be really sticky and prickly. As the disease progresses, it may start off just on one cane and it may spread throughout the entire healthy plant will turn diseased or it will spread to other plants so that you'll have the entire planting showing the symptoms. Rose rosette virus is actually transmitted by a microscopic mite. The mite is so tiny you'll never be able to see it and it tends to hide within the axils or the buds of the plant. These mites pick up the virus and transmit it from one part of the rose to the other. So in some cases, if you catch rose rosette virus very early, you can remove the disease by pruning out the symptomatic portion. But if you have the mites and they've already spread to healthy parts of the plant or planting, then you may not be able to prune it out. One thing that can be done is spacing your roses adequately. If there's some distance between the plants, the mites aren't very efficient at getting around. They sort of have to jump or fly on wind currents. So if we space the roses a little bit more, it's a little bit of a barrier for the mites from getting to, from one plant to the next. Unfortunately, during the growing season, the only control that we have is to remove the infected parts or the plants as they become symptomatic. In the winter, when the plants are dormant, uh, there are some things that you can do to try to reduce the likelihood of rose rosette disease. You can come in and say around February, cut back the plants, do a really heavy pruning. When we take off a lot of the plant material and dispose of it in the trash, we're potentially taking away a lot of those mites and getting rid of them. So when those roses come out, there's fewer mites there. You can also at that time treat the plants with a product such as a horticultural oil or neem oil to help kill any of the remaining mites so that when they do leaf out, they'll stay healthy. Unfortunately, this virus is often fatal. Many people have lost entire plantings or the plants within a couple of years will just become so ugly or disfigured with a lot of dieback that they're removed just because their aesthetics is no longer very becoming. So if you do think you have rose rosette virus, we would ask that it, you might wanna have it confirmed. It does look similar to chemical injury. All you would need to do is clip off some of those symptomatic shoots and put them in a plastic bag and take it to your local county extension office. The extension educators can mail that plant tissue to the lab. We can test it for the virus. We'll also look for those microscopic mites so that we can make sure that what you actually have is the rose rosette virus and not something else such as chemical injury. So we're going to try to keep this out of our landscapes, keep our plantings healthy by watering, um, providing adequate fertility, and pro when you do install new plants, make sure that they're healthy and that they look good going in.